Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois is joining us right now. He's a veteran of the Iraq War. He serves on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. You bet. Yeah. All right, so how concerned are you uh, by this vote by the Iraqi parliament? Well, it's a little concerning, but keep in mind how we got where we're at in the first place. So the Iraqi people were out on the street protesting against Iranian, basically, infection of their government, takeover of their country. The Iranians, in order to change the subject, went after, started doing these attacks on the embassy and elsewhere. And that's how we got to the point we are today. It's a, you have a lame duck prime minister and the Iraqi people, I heard your prior guest saying, in Iran and Iraq now, everybody's united against the United States. It's not true. Uh, the reality is there's people that want Iran out of Iraq and it's a majority. So uh, yeah, it's something I don't like to see, but ultimately if Iraq wants to be a client state of Iran, who actually kills people that protest against the government, that's their choice. I don't think they do. You're a military veteran. What's your message to the troops, nearly 4,000 U.S. troops, including uh, from the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, who are now urgently being deployed to the Middle East? Well, my message is, you know, go and do what you're trained for. Hopefully you're not called into action. Uh, but America's job, uh, the American military's job is not to be safe. It's to keep the American people safe. That's why they do what they do. That's why they train for times like this when we need them. You know, people think, and, and I've heard a lot of people say the president never thought through second and third order effects on this. The fact that these troops are ready to go to protect American assets, to be on the ground if called, if Iran decides to escalate. Keep in mind, this attack against Soleimani was the first kinetic action we've taken against Iran, despite repeated ratcheting up of not just hitting a drone, not just hitting our allies' oil fields, then hitting Americans. What would have come next? This was our first and only kinetic response. This was not an escalation. This was a reaction to continued provocations. And now it's Iran's choice if they want to escalate. And, you know, frankly, the, the, the consequences to them will be devastating state, and I certainly hope they don't do it. Well, do you think uh, they will uh, escalate, they will retaliate, and that clearly would lead to further U.S. retaliation? It, it depends what form that is. So it, it's a couple things. We, we don't have an alternate kind of reality machine where we can see different options here. Uh, they're going to have to do something to save face, obviously, because they don't want to look weak. Uh, but I think the president's tweet yesterday has been much aligned, uh, and I may not have said everything that was in it, but it was important because it said, look, choose wisely what you're going to do. And so what Iran reaction may be now may have been far different what they planned, you know, two or three days ago until the president made it clear that we will react if we have to. And this is the other thing. I've been, I was critical of the president when he didn't react to the drone strike, when he didn't react to Saudi Arabia, but he made it clear he had a red line. That was affecting Americans that the Iranians didn't believe him. They went after Americans and there was a price and that price was against the man who designed it, not against as Secretary Richardson said, we could have bombed a bunch of boats and radar sites. We may have to do that eventually, but that would have killed dozens, if not hundreds of people that really had nothing to do with planning. So, so clearly, Congressman, you think the president did the right thing in uh, targeting uh, with this drone strike Qasem Soleimani. Yeah, I do. It was a targeted attack to the man that's caused all these problems. It was a legal attack in a country where American troops are legally in, where they have a legal right by the Status of Forces Agreement and AUMF to defend themselves, not just against an imminent attack, but against escalating tax and escalating threats. And the president under Article 2 has the right to defend that. Again, this was done in Iraqi territory. What was Soleimani doing in Iraq? Was he going to plan the next Thanksgiving dinner? Was he going to de-escalate tensions? Probably not. I, I want to get your reaction to some tweets that have just been released from the president and members of Congress. Uh, earlier today, the president tweeted uh, what he called a notification to Congress about potential counter strikes, and he said they could be done in a disproportionate manner. Then the House Foreign Affairs Committee, your committee, moments ago went uh, tweet for tweet, uh, responding in language mirroring the president. This media post will serve as a reminder that war powers reside in the Congress, it said under the United States Constitution and that you should read the War Powers Act and that you're not a dictator. What do you think of this tweet for tweet between the president uh, and the leadership of the House Foreign Affairs Committee? 
Well, you know, I've been disappointed in the leadership of the House Foreign Affairs Committee because it's become extremely partisan. Uh, defending what the president's doing or opposing it doesn't have to be based on the politics or whether or not you like the president. As you know, Wolf, I was on your show many times under President Obama, defending President Obama and his actions in a number of things. Uh, the president in his tweets, I, I get that it makes the American people uncomfortable. I'm critical on some of the domestic policy tweets that make me uncomfortable. But when it comes to international policy like this, those aren't designed to make the American people comfortable or uncomfortable. They're designed to make the Iranian government uncomfortable. If they make us uncomfortable, they're making them uncomfortable and they're making them think twice before they do something. I actually think the president putting out that the response could be disproportionate and that we have a number of sites targeted could lead to at least a mitigation or a moderation of what the Iranian response could be. But, you know, this idea that Iran's a victim and they're only responding to circumstances, they've been the one poking the bear for a long time. We've exercised a lot of restraint. And then when we responded, we targeted the man that did it, not other innocent people. I want to get your reaction. The Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, a man you know well, he used to serve in Congress. Uh, he says Americans are safer today than they were before the killing of Qasem Soleimani. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I do agree. Look, short term, there may be an escalation of danger, but I, uh, there always was. Iran has been unilaterally attacking the United States, trying to provoke us. The, Iran has been constantly trying to show us as weak by seeing no response. And so whether it's in the short term, maybe a little rise in tension, or long term, we've killed the man that designed the Iranian Middle East strategy that killed half a million Syrians, 50,000 of which are children. And by the way, we've also said that you can no longer use cutaway proxy forces uh, to do your bidding without bearing responsibility. That's a huge message for Vladimir Putin, who uses the Wagner Group, whether it's in, uh, whether it's in Venezuela, in Syria and elsewhere. Jim Shuto wrote a great book about that, that below the threshold response, we've now said that we consider that your action. That has a chilling effect through dictators around the world, including and especially Vladimir Putin. And we hope these uh, nearly 4,000 U.S. troops from the 82nd Airborne Division who are now on their way to the region will be safe. Uh, you're a military veteran. Uh, you hope that as well. All right, Congressman Adam Kinzinger, as usual, thanks so much for joining us. You bet, Wolf. See ya.